to no one's surprise, following their earlier intransigence, NATO diplomats yesterday walked out of the Malta Peace Conference. Clearly, peace is not on their agenda. Only threats and deception and endless profits for the capitalist war machine. But our brave comrades in the armed forces will not be intimidated. They stand vigilant along the German border. Their resolve unquenchable, ready to deliver... It was inevitable. Our massive preparations had gone on far too long for us to simply stand down. We were like a coiled spring, ready to throw ourselves into the fray. All we waited for was one word. Attack. Spirits were high, and the men joked about how we would crush the enemy with one fell stroke. But some didn't laugh. They had been to Afghanistan. They knew war. Find the road, comrade. Valodia. Don't you know? That's Colonel Arlovsky. He's a legend. Ah, Comrade Major Lebedev. It's been a while. It has indeed, Comrade Arlovsky. I was just wondering who they'd sent to babysit me. Your command is the key to this whole grand endeavor, Comrade. How could they send anyone but me? Your sense of self-importance hasn't lessened, I see. But I am very important, am I not? Or at least my dear old father-in-law is. <laughs> it's good to see you, old friend. So, how are we doing? Everything is in place. I can't say I'm very happy about all this. The Politburo knows what is right. Ours is but to obey. So they have decided. Get me Lieutenant Romanov on the horn. I want him to make a final survey of the forward defenses. Понятно, товарищ полковник. Get Lieutenant Romanov on the horn. Now. When? Soon. Welcome back, Grisha. Oh, how was recruit training? Boring. Ha, but necessary, Comrade Sergeant. Those recruits will soon be needed. Tavarishe! It's good to see you all here today. And it will be even better to see you soon breaking through that wall! 
and we'll teach those NATO dogs how to fight! They thought they could bully us into submission! They thought we'd give way and fall! But today, we'll show them that the Red Army bows to no one! Today, we'll show them the might of the Soviet Union! Get your vehicles! We go to war! So, it has begun. It has, indeed. I wonder how it'll end. Best soon. Today was an easy victory. Who knows about tomorrow? Nephew Kolya. He really distinguished himself today. Товарищ полковник, Captain Oloshenko reporting. At ease, comrade. This is Major Lebedev. Pleased to make your acquaintance, comrade. This was a crushing victory you helped win for us today. One of many to come. Soon all of Europe will see the glory of socialism. Will you be accompanying my uncle? We have that honor. But you should return to your unit, Nikolai. Tell the men that I am proud of them. I will, uncle. We'll do whatever it takes to ensure victory for our great cause. Comrade Major. He takes after his mother. A few more like him, and this war will be over in a week. I hope you are right, Valery Fedorovich. I really do. reports from the Coast Guard about a developing situation at the harbor front. We have a lot of unmarked container ships approaching. They're refusing to identify themselves. Over. took us by surprise. We had been at war for almost four months and still we couldn't understand what was happening. Even as artillery shells started exploding on the streets of Seattle, many people just stood there, stunned by shock and disbelief. War can be fascinating to watch on TV, but up close and personal, it's a whole other story. Imagine your office blown to pieces, your car thrown about like a discarded glove, and your friend lying on the street, his body torn to bloody shreds. That was the reality in Seattle on that fateful day in the fall of 89. 
The army was fighting in Europe and elsewhere, and our navy was supposed to protect us from an invasion. But they failed. They were fooled, as we were all fooled by the Soviet ruse. But as the first Soviet tanks started rolling off those freighters, a few of us tried to organize a desperate defense. We were not about to give up without a fight. Yes, this is Captain Bannon. I'm trying to reach the Major. What? Who's in command then? What do you mean, I am? What is it? Mr. President, General Morgan, we have a situation developing in Seattle. A situation, General? Communications have been sketchy. But it appears that Russian troops have managed to sneak into port using disguised cargo ships. Let me get this clear. You're saying that we have Soviet soldiers on American soil, General? That we've been invaded? Yes, sir. It seems more are coming in. Uh, we have precious few units in the area, and they're putting up what resistance they can. My God. What are our options? They're rather limited, sir. If we start pulling divisions back from Europe, we'll lose what control do we... I know. I know. But don't we have anything to defend our own country with? I've ordered what units that we have to go west, sir. Who's leading them? A Colonel Sawyer, sir. He's as tough as they come. Well, he better be. Assemble the staff. Situation room, 20 minutes. Very well, Mr. President. We fled east with the darkening sky behind us lighted by the many fires downtown. Some have later called the retreat organized, but I think it only seemed that way because we were all running in the same direction. Seattle was lost the moment those ships entered the harbor, and there was never any real chance of our holding the city. I try not to think about all those we were forced to leave behind. Captain Bannon kept us in a semblance of order, but I'll never know whether we were actually obeying his commands or they just happened to coincide with what we all thought best. We followed the freeway into the suburbs with the war close on our heels. Some artillery had already landed in the area and I remember seeing a broken swing set lying on its side next to a blackened crater. I think that was when it hit me. We had been invaded and nothing would ever be the same again.
There you go. Here he comes. Lieutenant Parker. Good to see you alive. And Captain Bannon. Seems I can't get rid of you. Seems that way, Colonel. Well, from what I gathered, you did a decent job at organizing the retreat, but I'm prepared to let bygones be bygones. <laughs> Screw up again, though, and you'll pay. I won't, Colonel. We'll see. This is Captain James Webb, and this is First Lieutenant Parker and Captain Bannon. They fought with me in Europe. Hey, it was tough going over there. Sorry I missed it. <laughs> you shouldn't be. We need to see about blowing that bridge so the Russians don't roll over it. Get back to your units. We'll take it from there. You there! What's your unit? Washington National Guard, sir. We don't matter. I need an orderly and you're in. Get your stuff. We're moving. Come on, man. Now, soldier. That's gonna take a while to rebuild. What's that thing? This, my friend, is a portable CD player. Portable? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's the sound like? I'd show you, but the batteries are dead. I wish I could find some new ones. Watch out! Stow away that toy, soldier! But it's from my daughter, sir. Go! Throw him away, cabron. Goddamn maniac. Let's see if we can get a ride back to the rallying point. Yeah, I need to oh, get back damn. to HQ. My love. I hope this letter finds you well. In my heart, I feel I will know if something happens to you. It is so hard to face the day without you by my side. My dearest Natasha, I am writing this sitting on a tractor, just like those we have on the Kolkhozes back home. They are not so different from us, this American. They have begun working triple shifts at the factory. I, I am glad that Inessa is not working nights. Many factories have been bombed, and I fear she... Though I am a little worried about Kolya. He is very hard on the men, and when I tried to talk to him, he just shrugged it off. I will have to make it clear that he is under my command. I think about all the boys over there whose mothers cannot sleep for worry. Those serving with you must be the lucky ones, Velocha, for I know that you care deeply for them. I will be home soon enough. Until then, know that I love you. Your Vladimir. In America itself, our valiant forces are making excellent progress. The front is expanded daily as city after city falls into our hands. Everywhere our troops are met by cheating citizens happy to be liberated from the yoke of their oppressive government. Already the American proletariat is joining us in spontaneous... The initial landing went well, and within a few days we had Seattle secured and several regiments moving out into the surrounding countryside. It felt great to finally roam free after having spent weeks inside the cramped container ships. The Americans soon rallied their forces, though, and we began to encounter pockets of heavy resistance. After a pitched fight, they would melt back into the countryside, leaving us to count our dead and wounded. It didn't take long before the strain and frustration of being in a hostile country so far from home began to show on some of the men. Donald Captain, second platoon says they're ten minutes out. Bastards! Tell that mongrel Petrov I'll put a bullet in his head if he's not here in five. Sokol, this is Shipovnik. My men are surrounded and need immediate reinforcement. 
Shapovnik, I'm aware of the situation. Move your troops to the western fort and cross there. Romanov will create a diversion to the east. Sokol, we don't have time for diversions and flanking maneuvers. I need a bridge there. I say again, you are to flank to the west, Shapovnik. Sokol, out. Clean, clean, clean! Order 2nd Company to move west. We'll run the border fort. I hope the old fool knows what he's doing. That goddamn time that you called. Your mother's worried sick, you know that? I thought we agreed that you'd call at least once a week. I'm sorry, but you might have noticed there's an invasion going on. And yeah, and you guys turned and tail and ran, and that's what we get with a bunch of spoiled brats defending our country. We didn't have any choice. You know how many men we lost? We in my day, wouldn't have let those commie bastards come ashore in the first place. We would have fought them to the last man, with bayonets if we had to. Yeah? I don't remember you winning any wars. We won the battles, son. And if your father were alive, he'd cry to see what you've become. First, that business in Europe, and now you can't even hold your ground when the commies are in your own damn backyard. Hey, goddamn sissy. Mark. Yeah, I'll tell your mother you called. Earl! Damn it. By blowing the highway bridge, we actually managed to slow the Russians down for a while. The colonel led us south and we met little resistance along the way, but Bannon and Charlie Company kept lagging behind. Bannon blamed the mud, but I think he was secretly hoping to get away from the colonel. Eventually, we reached a small town called Pine Valley. It was decided that we would make a stand there and wait for reinforcements, but first, we had to retake the town from the airborne forces that had gotten there ahead of us. Most of the men hadn't slept for two or three days, and the colonel only allowed a few hours of rest. But I never heard a complaint. Everybody knew what was at stake and what we were fighting for. Whiskey Five, come in. I can't get reception. Keep trying and tell me as soon as you get through. Get over here before he craps all over you. You get it? <laughs> Colonel Sawyer, sir! Captain Bannon, Captain Webb, Lieutenant Parker, let's get started. This is the town of Pine Valley. Sir, I just talked to Colonel Wilkins. He's been delayed and his battalion won't be here until- Sniper! Return fire and get a medic over here! Now listen up. We're here. Ivan is coming from this direction, and we've been ordered to take and hold the town until Colonel Wilkins arrives with reinforcements. Yeah, it's about time we showed those commie bastards. Damn it! There is a supermarket here, and I need you to secure it. Now, Webb and Alpha Company will support you. And make sure you get it right this time. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Parker, I need you to take this gas station ASAP. Please take care of that sniper. Get to it! Where the hell is that medic? USS Missouri requesting contact with U.S. forces in Pine Valley. I repeat, this is USS Missouri requesting contact with U.S. forces in Pine Valley. We need target coordinates if we are to provide accurate fire support. I repeat, we need target coordinates to provide accurate fire support. This is Eagle Six in Pine Valley, and are we glad to see you, Missouri? We need fire support at Foxtrot Six and Echo Five. Over. Roger that, Eagle Six. Fire for effect, Missouri. Eagle Six, out. 
You're not listening to me. Yes, I am. You've told me your name is Michael Thompson and you're not with your National Guard unit. So, Mike, why do you expect to receive your National Guard pay? I'm sort of with the regular army now, and we're up in the mountains fighting, but... Are you actually in the regular army? Not officially. I, I kind of got swept up during the retreat from Seattle. Then have your company clerk file a 451-A. Look, our company clerk got his head blown off two hours ago. I need that money, and I need it sent to my ex-wife in Chicago before she... Mike, Mike, I can only pay you... Or an actual current spouse. That is if I could even pay you, which I can't unless I get a 451-A. For the ex-spouse, I'm gonna need a declaration from a court. A declaration from the court? <laughs> have, have you heard? We've been invaded. <sighs> that doesn't change anything. We have rules in this country for a reason. And if we- I swear, I, I'm, I'm gonna beat these damn Russians and, and then I, I'm gonna hunt you down. How do you like that? Yeah, hunt me down with a 451A. And I need it in triplicate, corporal. After Pine Valley, the Russians pulled back and tightened their perimeter around Seattle. Unable to mount an attack ourselves, we waited, nursing our wounds and trying to anticipate what would happen next. Not long before Christmas, the Russians made their next move. Several regiments attacked east up into the Cascade Range, and it soon became apparent that their objective was Fort Teller, the headquarters for the Strategic Defense Initiative, or as the public popularly dubbed it, the Star Wars Project. What we knew, and they didn't, was that the project was a bust. If the Russians reached the base, they'd realize the whole thing was basically a scam, that we had nothing to stop their nuclear missiles from striking our cities and military bases. We couldn't let them figure that out, so we moved east as well, taking the fight into the mountains and trying to delay the Russians while Colonel Wilkins and his people at Fort Teller dug in as hard as they could. I suggest we fortify these crossings and then blow up the bridge. Yeah, that should buy Wilkins some time. That won't work, sir. We don't have nearly enough And men. all you have us do, roll over and die? If Ivan gets to Fort Teller, we'll have a global thermonuclear war in our hands. Hey, must be a Russian scout. Damn it, we need to get moving. You won't be needed here, Bannon. I'm sending you 10 miles northeast on a recon mission. Understood, sir. All right, then. Wilkins is counting on us. Let's get to it. There's no need to be nervous, Captain. We're just filling some records cabinets in the morale section with these. I'm not nervous, Comrade Major. Very well. Interview number 461. Subject, Captain Nikolai Malashenko. Service number 2497-4. Interview conducted by Major Lebedev, Section 2, Third Director at KGB. So, Captain, we've been in America for several weeks now. What are your thoughts so far? Tavarish Mayor, we are making glorious progress. It is very satisfying. The only thing is... Is what, Captain? Well, I have yet to see the proletariat rise and stand with us. Instead, they lay ambushes and run when we try to engage them. They've done some damage. I suppose we must acknowledge that some may not want us here. Then we must demonstrate our resolve. Men are lost in war. That is to be expected. But the more of these attacks that go unpunished, the more daring they will become. And you are proposing? It is simple. For every ambush, we execute 10 random civilians. They will soon cease their attacks when they realize the price they must pay. And what if they don't? Then we should kill them all. In the face of great adversity, our courageous comrades in America fight on, winning battle after battle against an increasingly desperate enemy. Our troops now occupy most of the American West Coast and soon will have complete victory. Nobody had counted on the American civilians putting up such resistance. Everywhere we went, we were greeted with bullets. And our battalion had it easy. 
we had been tasked with pacifying the countryside, while four other regiments pushed into the mountains. They were headed toward a town called Cascade Falls, where there was some grand objective not even Colonel Arlovsky knew the details about. All we knew was that it might mean an end to the war. I remember thinking about those comrades, struggling through the cold and the snow, facing death at every turn. And I was ashamed, for I was happy that I wasn't with them. Colonel, 14 men dead, 9 wounded. These attacks must be stopped. I strongly suggest... Not we take... now, Kulia. We have already discussed this. The guerrillas will be dealt with according to plan. But it won't be enough! These are my men lying here! They are my men too, Captain. Don't ever forget that. Now, will you please get me an updated report on the status of the wounded? His idea has some merit. I will not be privy to wholesale slaughter of civilians just so he can satiate his need for revenge. It might work, though. Valeri, no. They hate us enough already. We have the location of their camp. That's where we'll strike. You don't believe in this, do you? You don't think we belong here. Do you? Didn't you hear me? They came and fired! But Comrade Captain, the Colonel forbade us Damn to... you! And look at the idea! Next time, your people will think twice before attacking us. What is the meaning of this? Get them out of here. Explain yourself, Captain. They were harboring weapons and food for the insurgents. I gave explicit orders that there should be no firing squads. They were aiding the enemy. That is irrelevant, Captain. You do not have the right to disobey my orders. But what if your orders are wrong? If you act without my consent again, I will have you court-martialed and sent home in shame. Is that understood? Is that understood, Nikolai? No, Colonel. It's not. What? You think I'm wrong? It does not matter what I think, does it, Vladimir Vasilievich? For good or ill, you have chosen your course. But have you chosen yours, Valery? Sooner or later, you will have to. Isabelita? Cariño? Hi, Daddy. Where are you? I'm on a fishing trip in the mountains, sweetie. It's beautiful here. Snow everywhere, and the air is so cold you can see your breath. I want to see snow, too. Soon, corazón. Soon. Who is it, Isabel? It's Daddy. Daddy? Can I talk to him, honey? Mom wants to talk to you. Okay. Take care, Cariño. And I'll see you soon, okay? Hugs and kisses, Daddy. Anton? Yeah. Honey, are you... I'm all right, and I'm going to stay all right. So stay at your mom's, and I'll come and get you when it's over. But when will that be, Anton? I don't know. Listen, I have to go. But I'll call you as soon as I can, okay? I love you, mi cielo. We met Colonel Wilkins at a small town called Cascade Falls, not far from Fort Teller itself. The town had been evacuated not long before, and it was decided that we would hold the area 
while Wilkins dug in at a narrow mountain pass to the south. Colonel Sawyer planned on luring the Russians into the center of town, where we could concentrate our defenses, but there were a lot of Russians coming, and not that many of us left. Unlike before, we could not retreat, because if we did, Fort Teller would fall, and Armageddon would follow in its wake. We all knew what that meant, and were determined to hold no matter what. Even Bannon seemed to have finally found his way. He was quieter than usual, and I remember wondering what was going on in his mind. This will be our final stand. We have to stop Ivan from reaching Fort Teller. What do we got in terms of support? The Air Force will be flying cast missions around the clock, but don't count on them to turn the tide. I'm not gonna lie to you, the Russians will throw everything they have at us. And we have to hold no matter what. We'll hold, Colonel. We've come a long way, gentlemen, and I trust that you will do what is needed when the time comes. Colonel Sawyer, sir! The Russians have reached the outer perimeter! And so it begins. Get your units. We'll teach Ivan the price of invading our homeland. Is this Colonel Jeremiah Sawyer? Retired? Not anymore, Colonel. You've been recalled to active duty. We need you in Europe. <laughs> I was wondering when you people would call. Has I been giving you a hard time? The Russians have proven more resourceful than expected, Colonel. They've made significant gains in Germany, and most of the Sixth Fleet has been destroyed. Yeah, I heard. So, I guess you want me to go to France? Affirmative, sir. You will command a combined U.S. and NATO task force with the order to drive the Russians out of southern France. You do know why I was discharged, don't you? Well, all has been forgiven, Colonel. I didn't ask for your goddamn forgiveness. You people got us into this mess in the first place. And now you're standing there with your pants down wondering what to do. Now that's what you get with a bunch of sycophant bureaucrats making all the decisions. Do you accept the command, Colonel? When do I leave? A small band of ragged defenders fleeing the nuclear explosion in Cascade Falls. 
had come a long way from the proud battalion landing in France in the early fall of 1989. It was months before the invasion of Seattle and the Third World War had already been raging in Europe for several weeks. The outbreak had been sudden, if not unexpected. High-level diplomatic talks were still going on when Russian tanks started rolling through the Fulda Gap and on into West Germany. The diplomats had failed, and the armies had taken over. The U.S. Sixth Fleet was destroyed during the initial fight, and the Russians followed their success with an amphibious landing near Marseille. The French army was pushed back hard, but U.S. reinforcements soon arrived to join a counterattack aimed at throwing the Russians back into the Mediterranean. We were all part of that endeavor, the unproven warriors of our generation, spoiling for a fight and happy that our time had finally come. And then we'll flank them to the right while the cavalry draws fire. We, oui, but we do have a problem. Captain Bannon reporting for duty. Ready to kick ass and take names, sir. You're an hour late, Captain. I'm sorry, sir. I got held up by this girl in the village. And... Your excuses don't interest me. This is Lieutenant Parker, and this sir. is Commandant Sabatier, our French right. liaison officer. Charlie Company is waiting for you by a farm just beyond this patch of forest. You can actually see it from here. Yeah, the... Uh, Get over there now. We're moving into the attack within the hour. Yes, sir. Very eager. He'll be dead by dinner. We'll see. Where were we, Commandant? You lost one of your officers? Yes, a sous-lieutenant. The fool stepped on a mine. Parker can handle that command. You want your lieutenant to lead my men? But that is unheard of! Do you doubt the competence of my officers, Commandant? You arrogant American, you think that you dirige the world as it vous plaît? That's not pas possible! Incroyable! We have a war to win, and I will do what me seems necessary. My decision stands. Now let's get to work. Zut alors! The Russians proved to be tough adversaries giving ground only when they absolutely had to and making sure we paid a high price for every yard we gained. But after a few days, a gap opened in the Soviet lines and Colonel Sawyer ordered several companies through. The Soviet headquarters had been found, and we were to destroy it as swiftly as possible. If we succeeded, the Soviet defenses would collapse and France would be liberated, but if we failed, we would be cut off from the main force and annihilated. It was a daring move, typical of the colonel. Always aim for a killing blow. Everything else is a waste of time and energy, he said to us once. And that motto seemed to permeate all his decisions. He was always certain. But the world was not. One uncertainty was Captain Bannon, who was acting like a loose cannon. We all wondered what it would take to bring him to heel. Our vanguard across that bridge. Those bastards would be well fortified. Oh, yes. I've ordered an artillery barrage to commence shortly. It should shake them up some. No quarter should be given. I want these locusts gone from my country. After today, they will be, Commandant. Parker, I want you to lead the attack. Bannon will be in reserve. R reserve? Sir, my company should form the spearhead. Your tanks will be needed soon enough, Captain. But, sir, we might miss the battle! Is this about fame and glory, Captain? No. You'll find none of that here. Now go brief your men. Yes, sir. That's our cue, Parker. Get your unit. Jump off in ten.
Polia, my dearest. I am so happy to tell you that you are now a father. Our girl is the most beautiful little angel you could ever imagine. And everyone says... Okay, Mashinka, she has such excellent news. I'm happier than words can convey, and I'm looking forward... Your to mother arrived yesterday. You will probably get a letter from her any day now, telling you about all the things she thinks I should do differently. But you know her... Don't mind mother. She's just set in her ways, just like Uncle Vladimir. He is a wary commander, and I fear he cares too much for the men. I care for them too, but we are fighting a war and sacrifice. I am so proud of you, my love. They say that we will have victory soon. I look forward to having you home and safe and raising our daughter together in this new world which you are shaping. We should name her Anastasia. Well, maybe, maybe Nadezhda. That would make mother happy. Take care, Mashinka. All of you. Love, Nikolai. As the Red Army continues to sweep through Europe, NATO is reeling. It won't be long before the tenuous alliance unravels and the people rise up in protest against the corrupt governments and the communist ideas. After weeks of bitter fighting in Europe, it was clear that we weren't losing. But we weren't winning either. Except for France, NATO forces were as unable to push back the front as we were to push it forward. The generals, being quite fond of their own lives, desperately sought a solution to the stalemate, and finally one was found. A strike force would be sent to the Norwegian coast to destroy the anti-air defenses there and open up a corridor for our bombers to fly through. Colonel Arlovsky was chosen to lead this strike, and Captain Maleschenko was ready to burst with pride over the mission. But the rest of us were just happy to get out of the meat grinder that Germany had become. Listen, you don't understand. I still have unfinished business in France. Sir, others can wrap that up. We need you elsewhere, and we need you there now. Where? Germany? I thought we were... Not Germany, Colonel. We want you to go to Russia. Russia? Now we're invading them? Not an invasion, sir. Reconnaissance. We're sending you to Norway, where you'll take command of Task Force Raven. Your mission is to infiltrate the Soviet border and retrieve intelligence from a downed aircraft. What about my men? You'll bring your officers with you and liaison with the Norwegian Rangers when you arrive. I have some doubts about one of my captains. There are no replacements to be had, Colonel. We're losing officers every day just holding the Russians at bay in Germany. All right, I'll make do. When do we leave? We're arranging a flight now. Godspeed, Colonel. Bannon was never officially reprimanded for the death of Commandant Sabatier. Instead, the colonel took him aside just before we boarded the plane to Norway. Bannon seemed to chasten when they returned, but it was hard to say whether the colonel's words had any lasting effect. Our mission was top secret. We got our briefing when we arrived in Kirkenes in Norway. We were going to be dropped near Mamansk inside the Soviet Union where we were to locate a crashed prototype stealth bomber. It supposedly carried some sensitive information, so it was imperative that we reach the crash site before the Russians did. 
Several teams of Norwegian rangers would be assisting us. Their commander, Major Johansen, was a hard-set man who'd already led four missions across the Soviet border. He didn't talk much, but his competence was clear, and we all felt good having him as a guide in that cold and hostile country. like that. How are we supposed to know? Adam, I've been trying to reach you. What the hell happened here? Sir, we just... You just what, you idiot? Did you kill these people? Well, I, I thought they were attacking and... With what? With broomsticks? <laughs> Take a good look at your handiwork, Captain. We'll discuss this later. Hey, Mom. It's Mark. Marky! Are you okay? Where are you? Look, I know I haven't called in a while. I'm sorry. We've been kind of isolated. But where are you? Not in France. Is Earl around? Uh, he's out hunting rabbits with Frank and Emmett. Listen, how are you, Mark? Really, your letters, well... I wish I could come home, Mom. I thought I'd do some good here, you know? Something Dad would have been proud of, but... It's all just kind of screwed up. Listen, honey, I'm proud of you. And I'm sure your father would have been too. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be. I've done wrong. Some things. If you did, you didn't have any choice. I don't know, Mom. Hey, uh, Earl always drinks when he hunts. He hasn't... A little. God damn it, Mom, you said you'd leave him if he did. Mark, it's not easy. Where would I go? Anywhere he's not. That son of a... He's my husband, Mark. Okay, Mom. Whatever. Look, I gotta go. I'm gonna kill some more commies and make Earl proud. Take care. Mark? We had barely gotten out of the area when we got orders to head north to a Soviet naval yard on the coast. The information we'd retrieved from the plane wreck indicated that several nuclear submarines were tied up there a greater number than usual, as if they were preparing for something special. It was decided by the higher-ups that since we were already in the vicinity, we would go in and destroy as many subs as possible before the Soviets had a chance to react. I think the Colonel had something to do with that plan as well. It was just his kind of mission in so many ways. Take the enemy by surprise, wreak havoc, and then get the hell out of there before they understand what's happening. Again, we would be operating behind enemy lines, on our own, without backup. It was almost getting to be routine. Screw-ups today, and that means you, Bannon. You hear? Touching down at five. We launch at ten. Get going.
That was exceptional, people. But I've got some bad news. Sea charts found in the second submarine point to a planned attack against several East Coast ports back home. I just spoke to Sakur, and we're being recalled to help defend them. We're going home, sir? We are. And you have a few things to answer for when we get there, Captain. Don't think I've forgotten. Sir. All right. Time to withdraw, everyone. Today we made a difference. Eagle Six out. Valerie, there have been no letters from you for two weeks now. Have they been lost by the Postal Service, or you are perhaps dead? Hmm. Well, that would at least be a good excuse. No, Sasha, I'm not dead. Much to your father's chagrin, I imagine. We have been constantly on the move, and to find even a few minutes of peace has been well nigh impossible. Father has been asking about you. I think he is genuinely concerned. Though I know you don't believe me. I sometimes doubt you believe anything I Your say. Your father would like Vladimir's nephew Nikolai. The man's idealism and zeal rivals that of the most fervent religious believer. Poor boy. One day he will realize the shame of it all. How is old Vladimir? You know I hold him in high regard. But please, ask him to speed things up and win this damn war. I am sick and tired of constant shortages. Of course. If I just ask Volodya, he will win the war for us in an instant. Not a problem, my dear. And listen to Vladimir. He has at least a semblance of morals compared to you, my dear. And don't die on me. Who would I then quarrel with? Your Alexandra. Yesterday, the Southern Factory Collectives reported production levels far exceeding the quota set for the period. The General Secretary conveyed his heartfelt pride to be the leader of such an industrious people. Yesterday also brought news of a minor skirmish involving NATO infiltrators. They were swiftly hunted down by our... We were still in Norway when we heard the news. Several NATO battalions had been airdropped inside our country. And I think many of us were shaken to the core that day. Our image of the invulnerable motherland cracked in a way that could not be easily mended. Captain Malishchenko loudly proclaimed that he would smear the ground red with the blood of the NATO bastards who had dared to enter our homeland. The colonel tried to calm us, saying that there would be blood shed soon enough. But we didn't settle down until we had boarded the planes back home. Our fiery rage doused with cold determination and vengeance foremost on our mind. If they were here half an hour ago, we don't have long before they arrive. Understand? Romanov must move immediately Tovarish to... Polkovnik. What? A message. Now? Very well. What is it, uncle? Kulia, it's your wife. Masha? She... Что? They're dead, Kulia. She and your daughter. Killed yesterday when the Americans raided Serbryansk. I'm so sorry. Sorry. You're at war. They died for the state. They died for socialism. I'm proud. You have my deepest sympathy. I don't want sympathy! I want leaders with the courage to prevent NATO from walking into our soil. Kolya, we're dealing with a strong adversary. Then we must be stronger! Comrade Colonel, our forward scouts report in bowed NATO helicopters. Where the hell is Romanov with the Shilkas? Kolya, can I count on you? Let them come, Uncle. 
Let them come. Just as the plans we found indicated the Russians hit our naval yards at Little Creek in Norfolk a few days later. But they had to do it with a reduced number of subs, and since our people had been warned, the attacks didn't cause much damage. Of course, we didn't know back then that they were going to invade Seattle a week later. No, back then it felt like we had succeeded, and it was time for us to go back home on leave. We'd been fighting continuously for weeks on end with little to no sleep, and most of us were at the end of our ropes. Bannon didn't talk much on the flight back. There were rumors that he was responsible for the deaths of several Russian civilians, and the colonel was having him transferred out. But nothing was confirmed until we were approaching New York, where several Ranger chalks had just been lost in fierce fighting against an incursion of Spetsnaz commandos. Listen up, there's been a change of plan. Spetsnaz commandos have staged an attack in New York. They've captured a lot of gear and a bunch of VIP hostages. We're going in to rescue them. How are we going to... Not uh... you, Captain. You'll be in support during this mission. And then I'm having you transferred out of the battalion. But, sir, I... I just don't know where to send you. Preferably somewhere far away as possible. Parker, I got your request for leave to visit your family in Seattle. Think Bannon would like it up there? I'm sure I can find a supply depot that needs a desk jockey. Sir... Now get ready. We'll be landing in ten minutes. Green smoke! Tell them to abort, damn it! This is Eagle Six! Abort! 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 Good work, Parker. You have one new message. You've reached Earl Davis and Harriet Mann and leave a message after the beep and we'll get back to you. Hey mom, it's Mark. I just thought I'd call to let you know I'm alright, but uh, I guess you're out, so... We've been fighting in the mountains for a while now. It's cold. Almost as cold as it was in Russia. Food's scarce too. Funny thing, you wouldn't think food would be a problem when you're fighting in your own country, but... There aren't many stores around here, and most of them have been looted clean. Anyway, we're holed up in a small town called Cascade Falls, and it looks like there's going to be a big battle tomorrow. Commies are coming at us with everything they got, and we can't let them through, because if we do, it'll all be over. I wish I could explain, but it's kind of a secret. I'm going to do good tomorrow, though. God knows I've screwed things up before, and I probably should have stayed out of the army in the first place instead of signing up because of what I thought Dad would think. Well, that doesn't really matter now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna do good. No matter what it takes. Take care, okay? Bye, Mom. I love you. As the mushroom cloud above Cascade Falls slowly dissipated behind us, we fought on in a blasted wasteland with trees singed black by the wave of searing heat. But at least we were alive. Bannon and the men in his company were not. Their sacrifice had been the key to stopping the Russians and now Fort Teller was safe. We had to destroy the town in order to save it. But back then I think the irony of that was lost upon us. The EMP from the nuclear blast had effectively silenced the radios, and what was left of our battalion was scattered over the surrounding countryside. We lost contact with the colonel early on. It soon became every man for himself as we tried to get reorganized and fight off Russian stragglers at the same time. The blast had been more powerful than anyone could have imagined. We thought the worst thing that could possibly have happened just had. Little did we know what was to come. Has anyone seen my friend Corporal Thompson? Hey you, 
Have you seen my friend Corporal Thompson? Hey, Hans! Over here! What's up, man? Oh. There you are! I've been looking for your sorry butt all over. Where have you been? You tell me, man. We were driving out of Cascade Falls. Next thing you know, I'm lying on a stretcher. Menix says I'm gonna be alright, though. Did you hear about Bannon and Charlie Company? Yeah, those poor brave bastards. You need to get off. We're leaving. Hey! Thanks for coming to see me, Ed. You! I just wanted that fancy new CD player of yours! Go to hell! I'll meet you at the rally point! Later! You people told me they would sit this one out. That was based on the intelligence that we had at the time, Mr. President. I don't think anyone in this damn government has any intelligence. So they're coming here? What do you propose we do to stop them? We have two options, sir. Pull two divisions from Europe and send them to retake Seattle before the Chinese arrive. But then we lose Europe and the war. In all probability, yes. What's the other option? They wait until the Chinese come ashore, then hit them with a B-83 strategic nuclear device. Hit them after they're ashore. Ashore in Seattle. Yes, sir. So, you're suggesting we wipe one of our major cities off the map? It's our cleanest shot to destroy the Chinese, Mr. President. Otherwise, we risk losing everything. <sighs> what forces do we have around Seattle now? A couple of battered battalions. The ones that stopped the Russians at Cascade Falls. But not enough to retake the city. We could order them to try, but I wouldn't get my hopes up, sir. Order those battalions to attack, General. And if they fail, as a last resort, order the nuclear strike. Mr. President, I'm sorry that it's come to this. Sorry. Yeah. That's all, General. As we were catching our collective breath and trying to reorganize, word came down that China had finally entered the war as an ally of the Soviet Union. A Chinese invasion fleet was steaming towards Seattle, planning to use the Russian beachhead to get ashore. The USS Missouri had been sunk a week earlier off the coast of British Columbia, and there wasn't much left of our Pacific fleet to stop the Chinese. So we moved west, towards Seattle, and the main Soviet defense perimeter. Webb said the men needed to rest for at least a day, but the colonel pushed us on, saying we had to see this thing to the end before it was too late. Later, when we learned about the president's backup plan, we understood why. But that would wipe out the entire city. That will be our only option if you fail. Understood, General. We'll do what it takes. Eagle Six out. It's a new war we're fighting, Corporal. I'm not sure I fit in anymore. Sir? Never mind. Get over here! We have to achieve a breakthrough today. The President has ordered a nuclear bomb dropped on Seattle if the Chinese manage to come ashore. In Seattle, sir? It'll make our failure at Cascade Falls look like a Cub Scout picnic. But we didn't fail at Cascade Falls, sir. When I'm forced to sacrifice a company of my men and drop a nuclear weapon on my own country, call it a goddamn failure. I won't let it happen again. Assemble the men. You'll get your orders shortly. Get us to the CP, and step on it! Yes, sir. Come in, Valoja. Please, have a seat. Is that thing on? No. Don't worry about it. These tapes will be gathering dust deep down in some basement. Shut it off. But... Valeri. As you wish, Colonel. There is no room for the truth on that machine. That's a dangerous word, Valodya. Truth. Such an ambiguous concept. Stop it, Valeri. We are defeated here. I know it, and you know it too. I'm afraid that Moscow cannot accept... I am not talking to Moscow. I am talking to you. And what exactly are you telling me? That I did not bring my men to America to commit mass suicide. 
And what is coming, I will need you with me. You can count on me, Volodya. I hope so, Valeri. Now, put that thing on and we'll get this done. Very well. Interview number 478, subject, Colonel Vladimir In his address to the party congress, the general secretary spoke of sacrifices made and sacrifices yet to come. But he emphasized that there is no doubt that we are winning this war and that the end is in sight. It was a rout. Our scattered forces headed for Seattle and the relief we hoped we would find there. To use a nuclear bomb on one's own country, it, it was insanity on a scale unmatched even by our own generals. It also destroyed what dreams we had left of ever achieving victory in America. <laughs> if it hadn't been for the Colonel, we wouldn't have known about Cascade Falls at all. Based on the communiques from Moscow, all was as fine as could be. And now that the Chinese had declared themselves our allies, victory was supposedly within reach again. But we knew better. If we go to Seattle, we'll die in Seattle. The Americans will never allow the Chinese to land. We saw in Cascade Falls how far they are willing to go. What exactly are you saying? We're not going to Seattle. I've made preparations to take the men home. A ship is expecting us at this location tonight. What? And betray our country? It's the right thing to do. I'll accept full responsibility. Were you aware of He's this? He's not in command here. I am. Please try to understand, Nikolai. I am Captain Maloshenko of the Soviet Army, and you are acting like a traitor. I'm doing this for the men, Kulia. Those men don't belong to you. They belong to the state. My wife and daughter didn't die so that you can turn tail and run. But we don't belong here. This entire venture has been a full... <laughs> Thank you, comrade. Thank you. He was a traitor. I'm taking my company to Seattle. I'll bring the battalion. To victory. To victory. Time to choose, old friend. To all Sokol elements, this is Major Lebedev. The Colonel is dead. I am taking command. They say you're asking me for papers. I'm sorry, Comrade Major, but since Colonel Arlovsky is dead, Cap I can't Captain without Captain, do you know who Comrade Minister Kravchenko is? Divryadna. Of course. He is the Minister of Defense. And my father-in-law. Do this, and I'll make sure you're duly rewarded for your selfless service to the state. Major. Without some confirmation, I simply And then can't... again, I could just have my men shoot you. Perhaps your second in command is more willing to listen. We'll leave with the tide. Good choice. Tell the men.
We were racing at full speed towards Seattle and could actually see the Space Needle when Division Headquarters ordered us to halt. They wanted to consolidate our forces and make sure that the reinforcements caught up. The Colonel argued against them, saying that we had to attack quickly or we would run out of time and Seattle would be turned to ashes. But HQ sent us into Puget Sound instead to retake a bunch of islands. The Russians had put up anti-ship defenses there that we were to capture for use against the Chinese. During this, the Colonel was called away for consultations and Webb, who was now a major, was put in charge in his place. Everyone was itching to get the main fight over and done with, but first we had an island to take. We would do it as the Colonel would. Swift and merciless. Is that you? Where are you? How are you? Listen, Mom, we, we don't have much time. This is my fourth try. We, we might get cut off at any second. I thought the phones didn't work since the attack. They, they do sometimes. Mom, listen, listen. You have to get out of Seattle. How, Michael? Soldiers on the streets? There's a curfew after five, and they shoot anyone who breaks it. They shot at Mrs. Flanagan, and all she was doing was... Not now, Mom. You you have to get out. I, I I don't care how. Maybe you maybe you could sneak through the sewers or something. Good God, through the sewers? This is my home, Michael, and I'm not leaving it for those Russian pigs to loot. If your father was alive, he'd say the same thing. Mom, the president has ordered that if What? Michael! I can't hear you. If we fail, damn it, just try to get out, Mom. No, Michael, you won't fail, whatever it is. And I'm going to stay here until this thing is over and done with. And Mom? Mom! Damn it. We returned to the outskirts of Seattle where the final assault group was being assembled. The Colonel reassumed command. The orders to retake the city no matter the cost. We all knew the price of failure. And so, early on a Monday morning with artillery rumbling in the distance, the attack was launched. Even with our reinforcements, we were way under strength. But what we lacked in manpower, we made up for in determination. We managed to force the breach pretty quickly, and the Colonel led us through it into the center of town, near the main Soviet base. As usual, we found ourselves behind enemy lines, overextended and without reserves. And when the Colonel finally called us together for a final briefing, Major Webb took me aside. He might have led us too far this time, Parker, he said. Just be careful, okay? Listening to Radio Free Seattle. And today, we have a special guest here in the studio. The Honorable Reverend Powell has a thing or two to say about the Soviet occupation. Reverend? I know that we're in a time of war. My brothers and my sisters, trouble don't last always. Over every mountain and through every valley, we shall prevail. Faint and to those that have no might, your strength shall be increased. We must never, never, never give up. You got to hold on until every battle has been fought and every victory has been won. We're going to shout hallelujah. Tis over and tis done. No need to worry and no need to cry. I can see the dawning of a brand new day. 
You're gonna make it pop. You're gonna make it pop. We're gonna be victorious. Wilkins Battalion is coming at them from the east while we press on from here. Sir, this seems pretty ambitious. How much time do we have? Not enough. The Chinese aren't very far out. We've only got one shot at this. I understand, Colonel. But if we tried a flanking move... Don't you think I've looked at all the alternatives? I've done nothing but that. This is the only way. But, sir, they'll expect Enough, us... Major. You have both been informed of the battle plan. I expect you to do your utmost to execute it. Sir... Dismiss. This is Ghost Rider. We have the target in sight. Deal left and arm your CBUs. Ours and Seattle is secure. Well done. Well done indeed. Webb, you're in charge of the mop-up. There will be some who won't surrender. And I want casualty reports from both of you. Sir, we should all... <gasps> Hang on, James. You're gonna be all right. I should thank you, by the way. For what, Colonel? For questioning my judgment when it needed to be questioned. Don't worry about it, sir. Don't worry. Where the hell is that medic?! This is Eagle Six. That was the last of them. I need a medevac for one of my officers. He's been wounded in the shoulder. Roger that. I'll send one of my ambulances. Thank you, Colonel. Well, Parker, we actually did it. Seattle is safe, and HQ says the Chinese fleet is turning around. The war isn't over, but at least our homeland is secure once more. And it's due in no small part to you, Parker. I'm proud to have served with you. Eagle Six, out. Thanks, man. So, is it over? Yeah, pretty much. They're rounding up the final stragglers now. So, I guess we did it, huh? I guess we did. Hey, so you finally got that thing working. Yeah, I finally found some batteries. You want to hear it? Yeah, sure. Here you go.